Then Allah says something remarkable. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ has several meanings in the Arabic language. It means for the purpose of, in order that, for the reason, in so that, but it also means in the hope, لَعَلَّكُمْ in the hope that you will receive a sense of protection. A sense of taqwa. And literally the word taqwa, let me explain it before so that we can really live with the Qur'an. Let's reflect upon it. Imagine you're reading the Qur'an in Ramadan, you come past this verse and you want to reflect upon it and look at it analytically. You want to reflect upon it and see what it means to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again, just like he did with the Qur'an, saying that the month of Ramadan is the month in which the Qur'an was sent down, then the focus is on the Qur'an itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does it again in the next verse that comes later by saying fasting has been prescribed and then focuses our, our attention on the purpose, the goal. And what is the goal? Allah says, in the hope, so that you can reach taqwa, to develop a sense of protecting yourself from sins. To develop a conscience within yourself, an awareness about yourself before anyone else, in order to tread carefully on a road which is full of thorny branches, on a road which has you know, problems, has uh, obstacles that will harm you. And these are the sins. You need to imagine that you are in this life, on this pathway. You're going from one place to another. And this other place on the other side is paradise. It's where there is no more harm. There is no more sadness, no more misery, eternal bliss, eternal happiness, meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in order to get there, you have to pass a road that's got thorny branches. Can you imagine? If you're standing, and this is exactly what Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu described a taqwa to a companion who came to him to ask him, what is a taqwa? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said to him, Imagine a field that you want to pass from one side to the other. And in that field there are thorny branches. How would you cross? Now it's left up to your imagination. How would you cross? There's thorny branches everywhere. But there are tiny gaps where you can step. Surely, at times you'll be tiptoeing. You'll be very cautious, thinking about every single next step that you're going to take. You're not just going to think 10 steps ahead, um, just 10 steps at a time. You're going to be thinking one step at a time, sometimes a toe at a time. And you're going to maneuver in such a way, so you're going to actually be planning before you actually take the next step. Because you are trying to avoid the thorny branches. Can you imagine someone with a right mind, who looks at this field and finds these, this glass and these thorns everywhere? And just says to themselves, you know what, I'm going to just justify for myself, you know, stepping on these thorny branches. I'm going to imagine that they're not going to hurt me, and I'll just step on it. And blood's flying everywhere. You're ripping those veins, you're ripping the arteries, your legs become paralyzed, and you're still saying to yourself, I'm okay, I'm okay. Do you think the person with the right mind would do that? No. You'd be crazy. An insane person would do that. Now, I want you to. Interpret that into a life that we see now, but there's no thorny branch. You can't physically see the thorny branches. Transform that into sins. These thorny branches are the sins. And wallahi, truly, on the day of judgment, these sins will harm the person. 